you want to tell these social justice warriors and feminists to say, hey, let's give credit for what this hierarchy is doing and not just rip it down. Well, no exactly. It's like, well, let's be sensible about this. Okay, so, so let's talk about hierarchies, which I do in the first chapter. I, first of all, I say, look, let's start, start with the notion that hierarchy is not the secondary consequence of the West or the patriarchy or capitalism. That's wrong. Okay, how do we know it's wrong? Well, animals organize themselves into hierarchies. So it's obviously not a mere consequence of human construction, much less human construction of, of Western society over the last 500 years. It's in animals. Well, how long has it been around? Well, how about, how about 350 million years? How's that for not a consequence of capitalism? Yeah, that's pretty damn solid. And so that's why I talk about the relationship between crustacean hierarchies and the simple crustacean nervous system and our nervous system, which share a number of quite remarkable similarities. And the point isn't that we should behave like lobsters of all the idiotic criticisms. It's that there's, there's, a, there's a neurobiological continuity that demonstrates that hierarchies are so ancient that our brains have adapted to them as if they are permanent elements of reality. And that's part of the archetype of the, of the father, actually, is the permanent reality of the hierarchy. So the question is, well, why are there hierarchies? And the answer is, well, there's, there's an answer for animals and there's an answer for humans. It's you have to organize a hierarchy when you're pursuing scarce resources. Because otherwise it's just a war. That, that's the alternative. There's either a hierarchy of access, which is why chickens have a pecking order. The top chickens eat first. Doesn't mean the bottom chickens don't eat. Although it does mean that if there's not enough food. And all the chickens accept the pecking order because otherwise they have to fight. You say, well, that's pretty rough on the bottom chickens. And yeah, but not as rough as being pecked to death. Like it's rough, but it's not as rough as constant battle. So a hierarchy in some, in some no small part is the alternative to Hobbes, to the Hobbesian state of everyone against everyone else. And then, and so that's one part reason for hierarchy. Another reason is, well, if you're going to pursue... Let's assume that you have to pursue something useful to stay alive. And I don't think anybody's going to disagree about that, because you just sit around, you're going to die. So you have to go out there and do things. Well, where? Well, in the social environment. Oh yes, with other people. So you have to cooperate and compete with other people to do something useful. Well, then you're going to make a hierarchy around that goal. And in that hierarchy, two things are going to happen. A small number of people are going to be the best at doing that. So that's an iron law. Doesn't, that's why there's Which not is hard ev for people to accept. Sometimes. Not everyone is a basketball star. Not everyone is a soccer star. Not everyone is a great musician. Not everyone is an artist. There's lots of hierarchies, but in each hierarchy, it's a small number of people at the top who do most of the productive work. Everyone can't win first, and not in, and certainly not in every game, right? Maybe if we had enough games, there's a game for everyone where they could be first, and a pluralistic society does in fact manage that quite well. But then the other thing that happens is not only does a small minority of people do most of the productive work in the hierarchy, but most of the gains of the hierarchy go to a small percentage of the people. You see that with wealth distribution. Okay, so, and that's a problem. The problem is dispossession. Here's the creative hierarchy. Most people aren't contributing. Okay, what the hell are they going to do? That's a big problem. Here's the wealth hierarchy. Most people aren't wealthy. So what are the people at the bottom going to do? The left has a role in, in serving as a voice for those who are dispossessed by the hierarchy. But the left goes too far when it says, well, then let's get rid of the hierarchy. It's like, no, because the hierarchy is the tool that enables people to, to do productive labor in a social environment. So that's just, that's too much. You've gone too far. You need to be grateful for the hierarchy at the same time that you're wary of its proclivity for tyranny.